Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We give you praise, King Jesus. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. You are welcome, child of God. I want to make you welcome this evening to this broadcast, this, this wonderful service. This is a service like we have never seen before. This is an evening like we have never seen before. We thank God that we are alive. You are welcome from wherever you are watching us this evening, whether in your living room in the UK or Africa, or whether today or tomorrow. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. It's nice to see you. How has been uh, your house? Has your week been? Uh, how is your family? You know, um, just because you are listening to me right now, watching me right now, uh, that means that God is doing wonders in your life. No matter what you have been going through, no matter what is surrounding you, He is still on the throne. And this evening we come to worship Him. This evening we come to adore him. This evening we come to elevate him. We, we, we gather, we gather at his table this evening, um, you know, that he may come and abide in our praises and he may come and feed us in the name of Jesus Christ, son of the living. He said in his word, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. This evening we come to receive from the bread of life. He is the God who opens the heavens and releases rains. He is the God who fed our forefathers in, 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 the, in the wilderness. He would open the, the, the heavens daily and he would release manna. He would release food. And our manna is the word of God. Hallelujah. This is what he says in John chapter 6, verse 25. You know, most of these guys were following him because of the miracles that he was doing. They were following him because of the bread. And uh, this is what he answers, to the, uh, he answers them in uh, uh, John uh, 625. The Bible says that these guys were looking for him and then they realized that he had crossed over to the other side of the river. Um, so they went to Capernaum seeking him and the verse 25 says, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they, say, they said to him, oh, Rabbi, when did you come here? And then when, you know, he, because he's, he's God, he was God. He was 100% God and 100% man, so he could see through them. Have you ever seen somebody who, you know, who, who's, who's, who's seeking for something, but the way he approaches you is with sweet words? This is how these guys approached him. And Jesus Christ looked, uh, looked at them and said in verse 26, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. This evening, I don't know what you are seeking. I don't know what I'm seeking. For me, I'm seeking the true bread of life. Hallelujah. Not just signs. Looking to be fed. Hallelujah. May that be your desire this evening. And this is uh, the key verse that I want us to, uh, to, 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 to keep in mind as we progress in this evening's service. Verse 27, he says, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. Hallelujah which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. My goodness. Just ponder that uh, verse. We are not going to be seekers of the food that perishes. We want to be seekers of the enduring food. The food. Eternal food. Eternal food eternal, that leads to eternal life. That's what we're going to seek this evening. And this is my prayer this evening, that you seek more than miracles. You seek more than, you know, the things that are perishable. Hallelujah. So tune in as uh, we progress in this evening and say, Lord, I want eternal life. I want bread that endures forever. Feed me until I want no more. Fill my cup until it is overflowing. So begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As we approach your throne this evening for 
wherever, wherever we are, King of Kings, we are <laughs> drawing to you virtually, my Father God. We pray that King of Kings we will draw near to listen. We will draw near to feed. We will draw near to eat. Not perishables, my Father God. But we will be different, King of Kings. Just like you say in Matthew chapter 6, that we must be different from the, the heathen who seek the things that perish. But we should seek your kingdom first. And all your righteousness, King of Kings, that's what we come this evening to receive. Feed us from your word, my Father God. We come at your table. Feed us, King of Kings. We lift your name above all names. We worship you, King of Kings. We exalt you, King of Kings. And we're not worshiping you because we are looking for stuff. No, we are worshiping you because of who you are. We worship you because you are God. We worship you because you are almighty. We worship you because you are the great I am. We exalt your holy name, my Father God. Somebody exalt him wherever you are. Exalt him in your living room. Exalt him in your bedroom. Exalt him in your car. Wherever you are, just lift him up in Jesus' mighty name. Mandelebo, sikala, bandelebo. We choose to minimize everything that is surrounding us and we choose to, 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 to magnify the Lord, magnify him in your, in, 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 your, in your house, magnify him in your heart in the name above every other name. This evening we do not draw close to him with just our lips. We draw close to him with our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, here we are, King of Kings. We are praying, Father Lord, for a visitation this evening. Father Lord of glory, we are laying, Father Lord of glory, a, run, a runway. May you come and land, O oh, Father Lord, in our houses. May you come and land in our spirits, my Father Lord, that we may see you, King of Kings, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Rain, my Father Lord, come down in your glory, come down in your power, come down in your strength, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We give him praise, we give him praise, we give him praise. Come on, welcome him in your living room, welcome him wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let him know that he is welcome. Let him know that he has preeminence in your life that he has preeminence in your heart, that he has preeminence in your family. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Feed us this evening, my Father. Visit us this evening, Father, in the songs, my Father, that will be sung. Visit us, King of Kings, in the word that will be ministered here in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, Lord, exalt your holy name. Exalt your holy name. Exalt your holy name. Exalt your holy name. Mm. Touch a life, my Father, Lord. Touch a woman, King of Kings. Touch a man, my Father, God. Touch, Father, Lord of glory, a boy. Touch a girl, King of Kings, in your power, Lord. Let your healing virtue flow in Jesus' mighty name. Let your healing virtue flow in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we are yielded. We are open, King of Kings. Oh, Father, we come with open hearts, my Father. We come with open minds, King of Kings. Father, let your word be written on our hearts, my Father, God. King of Kings, we glorify you, Lord. Restu karabrozekili andele bosha. Mm. Make, welcome him, welcome him, welcome him. Let him touch you in the name of Jesus. Father, we commend this service into your hands, my Father. Commend the worship into your hands, my Father. We commend the word into your hands. Use your servant this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm. King of kings, take over his intellect. Take over his tongue in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and let your mysteries be revealed. Let your mysteries be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Glorify him wherever you are. Glorify him wherever you are. You can lift your hands wherever you are and say, Father God, I worship you, Lord. I glorify you, King of kings. This evening I surrender. I surrender. I lift up my hands to you, my Father Lord, that you may reach out, Father Lord, and touch mine and, 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 and hold me, King of kings, and, and, and help me up in the name above every other name. King of kings, that I may become the man, that I may become the woman, the boy, the girl that you created me to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. If you, if you have your hands wherever you are, just put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give him praise. We give him praise. Hallelujah. This is what he said, that whoever comes to him, whoever comes to him, he will not pass up. 
will not cast out. Whoever comes to him, and this evening we come to him. Hallelujah. He says, come to me, Lord, all you who are, heavy, who, are, who, are, who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This evening, may you enter into his Sabbath. May you enter into his rest in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We're going to transition into worship, and then later on I'll come back and I will introduce our speaker today. We have a guest speaker. He's not a stranger on this altar, and he's not a stranger to Shiloh Tabernacle, but he is a great friend of ours, and uh, you're going to be blessed, trust me. So tune in, grab a cup of tea, and make sure that you are not going anywhere. Grab a pen, grab a paper or you know, your, your notebook or your iPad, whatever it is, and make sure you're taking notes this evening. Hallelujah. Let's transition into worship. Make sure that you are participating in the worship. Do not be a spectator. Bless you. Hallelujah. Good evening, church. I hope you're all well this evening, um, and I hope you're ready to worship. I just wanted to read for us um, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15. And it reads, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself, verse 16, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This evening, I wanted to remind us that we are children of God, that he is our father, that we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of peace, of love and a sound mind. Even though the times are uncertain, the times are trying, we remain children of God. Our identity in Christ does not change because our situation is changing. It doesn't change because our circumstances have changed. It remains the same for he is God. He will remain God through it all. And that's why we remain confident that we are children of God. So prepare yourselves to worship and sing with power and confidence. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Amen. Father, we thank you that we have not been given a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but a spirit of adoption by which we can cry, Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for we are your children. Most high. 
my God, I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. evening While I was 
Hallelujah. He is who he says he is. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That, let's appreciate mercy for that awesome ministration in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, my God, my God. Pastor Martin, how are you, sir? I am blessed beyond measure. How are you, sir? I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> how, how have those songs ministered to you? <laughs> what does being a child of God mean to you? <laughs> Identity. Um, uh -huh. I Interestingly, as I was preparing today, one of these songs that came to my spirit yeah. um, again was um, with the theme, I am a child of God. Amen. Basically, they, they take you to a different tangent. They, yeah. um, they escalate you into the realm of eternity. Amen. Yeah. Halle hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how have you been, sir? I've, I've, been, I've been blessed. I've seen the goodness of God uh, uh -huh. in many ways. Um, among, among, amongst them is an increase in understanding of who he is. Mm. Uh, you know, the Bible declares that I may know him, mm -hmm. you know. So, and, and for me, that, that's, that's the, the oil I've been, I've been marinating myself into, getting to know him deeper and deeper. Amen and amen. Uh, I, I like uh, the way you put it, increase in understanding. Yes. Um, yeah, understanding, understanding. What, what, can you just uh, elaborate a little bit about that understanding? Ephesians 1.18, um, mm. Paul is praying for uh, his, um, you know, uh, brethren. Mm -hmm. And he says that, um, above all, I pray mm -hmm. that your understanding, the eyes of your understanding might mm. be flooded with light, illumination. <laughs> because in, in Paul's passion, Anybody without understanding that mm -hmm. there, 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 there are certain dimensions you cannot navigate mm. in the in the expression of who Christ is inside of us. You know, he said to them uh, when he was about to depart in John 16, he says to them, there are many things I want to say to you. Yeah. But I cannot at this moment. Mm. But what does he say? I will pray. No, I will leave you with my spirit. Mm that he will guide you in all truth. In other words, mm. however much I say, mm. your understanding mm -hmm. is not at the level required. So I'll oh. bring my spirit to lead you to the place of truth. So understanding gets you to getting the mind of Christ real time. And lack of understanding is you don't get the mind of Christ in real time. So you are in delayed time. <laughs> anybody, is in, anybody in delayed time is has got company, and that company mm. is the enemy. Wow. Awesome, awesome. That's, that, those are powerful truths. And I like the way uh, Paul puts it, as, like he quoted in Ephesians, where he says that the, the, eyes, the, the, eyes of, the eyes of your heart, you know, may receive yes. understanding, meaning, you know, that uh, understanding has got eyes. You've got exactly to see. That. You've got to see, you know? Yes. Mm. Exactly, you've got to see. And what mm. is interesting about the sight here, Paul, mm -hmm. Paul is speaking to the Ephesians because they have got the Greek mind. Mm. The Greek mind is the cranial mind, which talks mm. about intellect, understanding, and all that. But yeah. Paul is saying to them, this understanding is deeper. This understanding mm. is of a spirit realm. So mm. he's saying to them, I will use your language, which mm -hmm. understanding, but here the eyes of your understanding are flooded the light. That means your heart, your mm. spirit mind gets mm. an understanding just mm. like your cranial mind and your cranial brain, which is My quite God. powerful. Wow, wow, awesome stuff. Wow, wow, that they may see, that we may see him may, in may, his true glory. See. Hallelujah, it's because it's, exactly. it's, it's quite possible for a Christian, you know, to, to traverse, uh, you know, uh, this Christian walk and, and never come to see, you know. Never come hundred percent. Yeah, hundred um, yeah. percent. You see, pro proximity is not always access. You know, <laughs> there were some that were with Jesus, mm -hmm. and uh, they never got to see Jesus. Um, mm. Judas Iscariot never got to see Jesus mm. because if he saw Jesus, he would never have betrayed him. Mm. Uh, you see, Gehazi was with Elisha, with Elisha, mm. but you know, but Gehazi still had the mindsets of bribes, the mindset of bribes, mm. and because of that, he was blind. The I point comes it. when uh, Elisha says, God, open his eyes that he may see. Yes. And yes. then God opened his eyes and he saw a company of chariots. So Jesus. Th there are so many instances where believers come mm -hmm. to church, they come mm -hmm. uh, into fellowship, but they are as blind as anything. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. the most significant thing is to open the eyes of your understanding to see, which is the eyes of revelation. Yes. 
and, yes. and, that, and, that, and that is what sets one free. Amen. Because amen. truth and revelation go hand in hand. Amen, amen. And indeed, uh, just like I, I think you've just brought up a very good example of uh, Gehazi's eyes being opened. Isn't yes. that how in these situations, like in this past, you know, uh, months, or two, almost two years now uh, in the pandemic, uh, when we look around and it's, it looks like, you know, you are surrounded by all these things that, and, and, like, and it's, it's like God is nowhere to be seen. Uh, you know, it, I, I think it, it, it's, it's going to take a, a, a certain set of eyes to see that he is there with you. You know? I mean, I can make a statement, very mm. a candid statement. Mm. These are the most glorious moments to be alive. Yeah. I mean, Paul, Moses, Abraham, and, and their cohorts are shaking mm. their heads thinking, God, give us a chance. We yeah. want to live in this generation. Yeah. Because the dimension of God has mm. never been expressly vivid to us mm. as it mm. is today. Mm. Um, and, and that is in reference to the magnitude of what falls, be, what is behind us. This is an mm. opportunity mm -hmm. for the manifestation mm. of the power of God, the Amen. manifestation of the power of God. Th these are what they call invitations to the dimensions of glory. My God, deeper, As deeper dimensions. Invitations, the dimensions of glory. And, and mm. God has given me an opportunity to walk into some of these dimensions in part. Mm. And I just have seen the wonder of God. I mean, child of God, if there mm. is no crisis that you are navigating, mm. not brought about by yourself, but an invitation for you to walk in certain glories, mm. then there is a situation that you need to pray for. Mm. God operates when there is perceived crisis. I mean, this guy is tired and mm. he wants to go home and he tells his disciples, you know what? Um, really tired, and mm. there is a sea of people who are mm. hungry, mm. and the guys are like, "Let's take refuge. Let's go away. Tell them mm. to go in town." And mm. Jesus looks at this situation and is like, "This is a moment for teaching." Yeah, it says to James, I believe not James, I believe you feed, feed them. them. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm thinking this is a crisis, bro. Yeah. We've spent the whole day hungry. Yeah. Um, been teaching the whole day this guy we're not going to get food anywhere there are no yeah. shops in this place where there are no shops is where yeah. god is where oh, there is no medicine for a covid is where god is Amen. where we do not have natural solutions is mm. where god is mm. because god is now asking you and i feed them mm. god is asking you and i walk love it mm. and walk into those icus and mm life where there is death Amen. and Amen. speak sanity where there mm. is insanity and mm. open the eyes of the blind that the yes. eyes of their understanding might yes. see yes john in john 8 mm. he meets this man who is blind and mm -hmm. he says to them that that it might be fulfilled mm. at the works of the son of man mm. and then it's interesting he opened the blind man's, man's eyes and eyes, he said, we yeah. need to do these things while it is day yes because yes. the night is come, we need to do all these things while it is dead. But the, the miracle of the blind eye was mm. such that mm. these things are fulfilled. Mm. Yeah. And in his template, in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 mm. to 19, he mm -hmm. gives us a template mm. of his mission. He says, I am the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He quotes the book of Isaiah 61. Yeah. Remember, yeah. we didn't have the transient books. The, the yeah. times of Jesus, they were quoting the books of the Old Testament. Yeah. And then after quoting Isaiah, he says, mm -hmm. to open the blind eyes, mm. to set the captives free, yeah. to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. So there is something significant about the blind eyes yeah. being opened yeah. and about the glory of God being displayed in yeah. this time that we're presiding over. Right now, right here. Amen and right amen. Now, right. Even right now, right here, yeah. blind eyes are opening. In the name right of Jesus. Right now, right here, Amen. people are walking out of hospital beds. Hallelujah. They are going back home without mm. a doctor's sign off, mm. but there is a doctor of doctors. Mm. I know it. Hallelujah. Because there is a grace. Mm. Tombs are opening up. Yes. And people are walking out and proclaiming mm. the glory of God. Amen. There is headlines, greater headlines in the unseen realm than mm. there are in the mm. seen realm yes. just bbc fox whatever news those are lies mm. because that's not the reality of mm. christ mm. we walk by faith, faith and not by the sight. reality of yeah. christ yeah. Yeah. in the yeah. name of jesus amen sure. and amen, amen.
same time. Alleluia. Sorry, I'm carried away there, man of God. So, but, uh, wow, wow, wow. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the singer put it quite well when he said, open the eyes of my heart. Oh, Hallelujah. My heart. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, for those powerful words, uh, Pastor uh, Martin. And so we want to release you right now that you may <laughs> minister that which God has uh, put on your heart. Um, I, I was just provoking you there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job, man. <laughs> yeah, but sir, before we get into the word, uh, because there's somebody who may just be, you know, watching uh, us for the very first time, and you know, I know you've been here before. Why Ampelos Word Ministries, sir? Ampelos, um, mm. it is really the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said yeah. to me, it is mm. from John 15, really, mm. uh, ch chapter number 15, verses number one, mm -hmm. uh, which is the genesis of Ampelos and the ministry where God was ministering to me actually a year ago, it was August mm. 2020. Mm. And he says that um, I am the true vine mm. and my father is the husband's man. Wow. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, I'm the true vine. There are many folks that are in vines that are false. Mm, mm, because mm. the vines are false, they're not getting the nutrient. Mm. Because it says, whoever abides in me and mm. I in him. Yeah. So those that are in the false vine are not abiding in him. My and God. he said to me, go and teach them about mm. the true vine. Mm. I'm a loss, mm. meaning it's the Greek rendering for true vine. Amen so and amen. We teach the truth unadulterated. We are not apologetic. It's the truth of the gospel. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Well, Pastor Martin, take it away. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord use you. May the Lord speak through you. May he take over your intellect, over your tongue. In the name of Jesus, may a certain man out there, woman, boy and girl, be changed and transformed by the power of the word of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Take it away, sir. You're welcome. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I'm very privileged to be hosted by a good friend of mine and good friends of mine, uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Ruben and Apostle Joyas of Shiloh uh, Tabernacle Ministries here in London. And um, greetings from um, all those people that have ministered, prayed for uh, um, Pelos. And um, I'm excited about what God is about to do in your life. I am persuaded beyond a shadow of a doubt that your life is not going to remain the same today. Your life is not going to remain the same today. I speak healing where there are ailments, healing of the body, healing of the mind, and healing of your spirit, man. I am persuaded that God's word, which is a medicine, the Bible declares that the entrance of his word brings light and brings understanding to the babe, to the simple. So I'm persuaded that God is doing something awesome. I always um mention and welcome and acknowledge my very good friend my dear friend and uh, the holy spirit um um uh, my dear friend holy spirit you're welcome i love you man you're so cool i mean the way you work with me is amazing i'm persuaded that you are opening hearts right now i'm persuaded that you're bringing understanding right now i am persuaded that you're changing lives but more so that you're doing something monumental in the body of christ right now in the name of jesus something profound is happening in the body of christ right now because truths are being unfolded i want to start um my teaching um in the book of uh, John chapter number 17. And if you could just uh, go with me there, John chapter number 17. And I'm just going to uh, bring out a scenario that will uh, perhaps provoke uh, the pause of your understanding here. In John 17, Jesus prays for himself. And he prays for the disciples and the brethren. Jesus, the son of God, prays for himself. At some point, the, the title of this message will emerge depending on how the Holy Spirit is leading us. He's here right now, he's doing a work in your life. Uh, Jesus spoke these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that he may also glorify you. And then he continues to pray as you have given him um, authority over all flesh and that should give eternal life to many so as you have given him then when he gets to verses number 11 and verses number 21 that's where i want to um place 
um, my uh, emphasis. And it says in verses 11 of chapter number 17 of John, it says, Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. Which world is he referring to? It is the world where there is the governance or there is the, to an extent, the control of the fallen one, the devil. But he has left us in this world because he's confident of the influence we are to give to this world. We are the salt and light of the world. We are the salt and light of the world. If you took out believers from this world now, in a moment, this world will dis disintegrate into utter chaos. What holds the world together, the sanity thereof, is the fact that believers are in it. So he says, I have come out of this world, but I have left you in the world. He says, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. And what does it say? That they may be one as we are. This is one of the most amazing scriptures because Jesus here prays for oneness. If we go to Matthew 28, he says, all authority has been given to me. I now give you this authority. And then he begins to give us the authority in Matthew 28, as it were. He says, and I, and, 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 and uh, you know, trump over scorpions and serpents, go preach the gospel. That was an authority issue. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, again, he gives them authority. He doesn't pray. He doesn't speak to his father. He gives them authority. In so many instances, we've just been speaking with Pastor Robin earlier on. Um, he just commands the disciples to feed the 5,000. And when he was going to multiply the food there was, he gave thanks. So some of you might be having just five loaves and two fish, but you need to feed 5,000. You've only got 50 pounds, but you need to execute stuff for 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. Or you've got something so meager compared to what God has placed inside your spirit. Well, the formula is you give thanks with what you've got. But here, Jesus does not command anything. He doesn't delegate authority. He doesn't give thanks. He prays fervently. And amongst the articles of this prayer is unity of the body. Powerful. And, and, and someone needs to ask themselves, why is he praying for unity of the body among all things? It appears to be soft on the edges compared to the, you know, hard-edged things that he did and, and he, he executed and commanded and he delegated. He, in fact, even says greater things than this you will do. But now he's praying for unity. And that is something that should provoke our understanding and allow the veins of the Spirit of God to try and give you, um, give us insight as a believer. As a believer, you know. And it says in verse 11 of John number 17, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. The scripture might be fulfilled. Verses number 20. I'm going to jump there and go to verses number 20. He continues to say, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So this prayer in John 17 also was made or done on our behalf who have believed the gospel on account, on the account of the disciples and the people they taught and the people they taught generations on end. Jesus prayed, said a prayer that did not have boundaries. It was an eternal prayer. And it says, even those that will believe, Jesus has prayed for somebody who will believe right now as God is sharing this message. Someone's heart is going to be open and they will believe the gospel. They're going to give their life to Jesus Christ. He prayed for you. Jesus prayed for me years before I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Years before um, I, I tried to take my own life because of the circumstances of this world. He had prayed for me. Now that's powerful. 
And one of the things he said that all those you've given me, I did not lose anyone. So Jesus has prayed for us. Now, this is not a license for people to be lackadaisical. It isn't. But an assurance of how Jesus has anchored this boat called salvation and life in him. But that's not the point I'm making. Um, the point I'm making says here, um, verse 21, verse 20, I do not pray for this alone, but those who will believe in me through their word, that all may be one, as you, fa as you Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. My God, there are so many things that he said concerning what the world will see and believe. One of them is um, when he washed their feet and he served them. And then he said to them, this you should do amongst each other. That's how the world will know that I sent you. Okay, this is service unto one another, loving unto one another. Now again here he says that they are one just as you and I are one that the world will know folks the world will not know that he sent us even though we gather and wear nice clothes and nice fragrances and 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 have the same hairstyles and and say certain things a certain way that is uniform that's not how the world will know the world will know christ when we are one you might be in Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Russia, Taiwan, Japan, Tokyo, wherever. But as a believer that you are one and the world will know. Powerful. My God, this is not uniformity in execution. This is not uniformity in dialect. This is not, it is spirit. There is a kindredness. There is something that is beyond the confines of natural tethering. Jesus prayed for this. He did not order it. He did not command it. He did not say by the power and authority. He prayed for it. Now, I'm, I'm always asking myself, why on this occasion did he pray? This is the sacredness of this manifestation of the glory of God. The oneness. One of the biggest challenges in the body of Christ for time immemorial has been coming to a place of one. In fact, right from the beginning, this oneness, he said, one in us as I am in you. So it is a oneness between divinity and humanity. That's how the world will know. And God has always been trying to restore, display this oneness. From the beginning, we see the serpent beguiling Eve breaking the oneness of the fellowship you recall when adam was being created eve was got from adam so you see eve coming from adam god creating adam and there is that fellowship the oneness is the design of god and the devil came and broke the oneness and god gets the children of israel and tries to replicate this oneness it's like this juggernaut with all sorts of mechanical faults but the principle is the driving force here. And we see God having this theocracy with the, with the children of Israel and, and displaying signs and wonders. And in the shadows and pictures, we see the story of salvation unfold. We see the glory of God. We see the grace of God. We see the kindness of God. Trying to ensconce this man into the fellowship and the oneness with each other and with God. Until... We get to hear in the book of Jeremiah when he says to them that I will give you a new heart, a heart of flesh, and I will put my laws in your spirit. Because the spirit is what needs surgery. And then Christ comes and he reconciles us back to himself. Why? The whole agenda is oneness. To keep us in this world, I'm going to go back a little bit in the book of John chapter number 17 i believe it is verses number 20 uh yeah number 20 i believe no number 14 i beg your pardon 
I want to touch something that is so central to this oneness. Because even when you're putting bricks and cement or mud or mortar, whatever it is, you've got to get stuff that puts it together. Okay? You can't have one house or one building if the sand and the cement and the lime and the stones and the gravel and everything is all on its own. Something brings it together. So in this instance, there is an ingredient that gives permanence, gives relevance, gives shape to this oneness. And he mentions it. I love scripture because truth is hidden in scripture. And he says here in verse 14, I have given them your word. Now listen to that. Not your words. Your word. I have given them your word, he says. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I have given them your word. This is the unique identifier of a believer. He is the word. And this word is spirit. The Bible declares that the letter killeth, but the spirit gives, gives life. So this word, the rema, is what he has left us. The revealed word of God. And this is what binds us together. Now, I'm going to talk slightly about the things that have been a challenge. But before that, I want to give a bit of additional context here. And usually I do teachings in series because, you know, revelation is eternal. It's, it's very difficult to say you've exhausted an area because the spirit of God, the Bible declares that our bellies will flow with living water. This is an endless um, sort of uh, dimension. So um, I'm going to try and lay a case such that whoever has been ministered to, the Holy Spirit will open them up to journey into deeper truths concerning this oneness. It will change your life forever. This is the key that the body of Christ needs. It's, it's not razzmatazz. It is not gimmicks. Uh, it, it is not eloquence. It is the truth of Scripture and the oneness of the brethren. And, and in here, this is what I want to introduce here. In, um, in the book of Matthew 16, 18, I want to put a disclaimer. Jesus is having a discourse with his disciples. And um, he asks them, what do people say I am? Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And then he asks the disciples, who do you think I am? And then they go, I think they are the ones who said Elijah, John the Baptist. And then Peter, Peter staggers into an ocean of truth in an instant. And he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus makes a declaration here. And that's this declaration. Believers, we need to continuously make this declaration. He says, Petros, Simon, Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Spirit of God has. And it says that on this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not pre prevail. On this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He says, and I said to you that you, 18, verse 18 of, of Matthew 16, and also... I say to you, you are Peter on this rock. I will build my church. On which rock? Which is Christ, the rock of ages. It is this rock from which flows living water. And again, we saw the shadow of this in the wilderness when the Israelites didn't have any water, you know, and is the, the water was coming out of the rock. And, and that water is symptomic of the spirit. Spirit of God, which is the living water that comes from the rock of ages, which is Christ Jesus. You know, I, I like these nuances that are, are almost like in, in, invitedly hidden for us to seek them out. 
you know, the, you, you can smell, you can smell the aromas of truth buried in, in, in decades of, of, of sacred and ancient truths. And, and they're pointing to Christ. And, and this is the sweetness, the beauty of scripture. That's why scripture says that his word was like honey on my lips. You know, it is so sweet. It, it is, it's, it's, oh, and undeniably life transforming. And I said to you on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And he says, I'll give you the keys. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. But that means that the gates of hell will attack and try to prevail. There will be a scuffle, there will be a fight, except that the outcome has been guaranteed by this scripture. So we are not simply passengers, we are participants in this whole experience. So when Jesus prayed for us, it is not a case for us to actually say, Jesus has prayed for us, so we do nothing. No, Jesus has prayed for us that we are actively participating in the divine plan of God on this face of the earth, that the world might know that we are his disciples. Now, I want um, to bring certain aspects that Paul, Apostle Paul, was also addressing uh, when it comes to unity. And this is very common when it comes to um, believers fellowshipping together, coming together, doing life together. First Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 18, if you're taking notes. I love to do a Bible study in my teaching because... Every time you open scripture and read it aloud, it is doing something to yourself, your spirit man. If you are reading scripture all the time, I kid you not, if you have a problem with your skin, try that remedy. I, I can be quoted, just read scripture, read it out loud, quote them, read them, repeat them. Give yourself a week, go back in the mirror and look at yourself. Trust me, this word is healing. First Corinthians chapter number 11. And I'll read from about verses number, let's say verses number 17 or thereabout. So 1 Corinthians 11 and verses number, um, let's start from verses number 15. I'm going to bring out something here. Number 17, let's start from there. Okay. Conduct at the Lord's Supper. Now Paul is addressing the church of Corinth and is observing these things. And he doesn't like it. Now, in giving these instructions, verse 17, 1 Corinthians number 11, chapter 11, verses number 17. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, someone say, as a church, not a building. A church is a body of believers, wherever they are, in a family in a community, anywhere, as a church. I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part, I believe it. He needs to address it because it, he cannot move forward. He cannot teach. There will not be widespread revelation. There will not be impact. The world will not know. So Paul is like, wait, 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 wait. let's park the bus and address this thing. He would have said, well, Jesus prayed for unity. Somehow to work itself out. Let's go. No, 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 no. We are active participants. We are not passive. And I'm going to come to that in how do we capture the dimension of being in one accord. The body of Christ. Folks, we cannot be foolish and childish. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, it's because I left. No, no, no. That pastor 10 years ago. No, I left their church and um, I, I used to be the one painting the ceiling. They, they, may, not look, they may not be happy with me. I'm, I'm not going to go back. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. We are one body. It should be a handshake where you say, glory to God. You're going to go and minister and bless some other people on our behalf. God bless you. That's the attitude of who we should be. That's the oneness. So Paul is saying here, I'm not praising you because I hear there are divisions among you. For first of all, that was a figure of speech, by the way. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that you are, there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. For there must also be factions among you that those 
who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? Who is the object of our oneness? The Word. He left us with the Word. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, there was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. And he came, the Word came and tabernacled, tabernacled among men. So when they're eating the Last Supper, they are in reference to, this is my body, take ye and eat. This is representation of Jesus Christ. If they are eating of Jesus Christ, why are they having divisions? Why? It's a bit surprising. And, for, and it says, verse 20, Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. And one is hungry and the other is drunk. That is the division. Ah, ah, koshikita, yeah. You know, you are assuming if someone is reading the Bible from cover to cover, they have read the book of Acts, chapter number two, chapter number three, chapter number four, chapter number five, chapter number six, chapter number seven, chapter number eight. We see now um, Philip in Samaria, chapter number nine. We begin to see Paul being transformed, you know, when he's en route um, Damascus, chapter number 10. Cornelius, chapter number 11, you've read all that. You have seen how these people did not allow one the other to go hungry. And indeed, the Bible declares that nobody lacked a thing. This was one. This, this is where you see the church growing exponentially. It is growing to the extent that the Romans are confused. And Paul is addressing it here. If we are having supper, which is Jesus Christ, how can it be that one is hungry? It is even worse that you're not even aware. You're not just divided, but you're even blind. Oh, my God. These are the times where we should be waking up. The world would be pointing to the Christians, the body of Christ, and saying there is a leaf for us to borrow. And he says, what? Verse 22, do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God, church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. And thank God there were men who would stand and address these issues. Not fold and tuck in their shirts because the next sponsorship might not come to appear on television. God is not interested in that. He isn't. He's interested in the integrity of his word and his command. Paul addressed the divisions. Because divisions are not what Christ was all about. That's not what he prayed for. And he addressed this when he said that, Behold, God has shown me a mystery. And that mystery is where he said, the mystery that was hidden before the... The mystery that had been hidden from long ago up until that point, Paul is saying that the Gentiles and the Jews are eating on the same table and that they are one body. Because at the time, it was the greatest cause of friction. And Paul is saying, listen, this is the mystery from before time. This mystery, in part, was revealed to Peter in the book of Acts when God showed him all types of animals in a vision coming on, on, on a sheet. And on this sheet were all the animals that chewed the card, that didn't chew the card, all the animals that the law had forbidden them to eat. And, and the angel of the Lord is saying to him, hey, here it is. You can eat. We see Peter now being taken to the house of Cornelius, the biggest divide. God is restoring and answering the prayer that Jesus made that we are one in him. Because after the fall in Christ Jesus, oneness was categorically impossible. 
The reconciliation and this oneness was in Christ. So he prays a prayer knowing very well that upon resurrection, these things should piece together. So I cannot be having an issue with someone who has got the same spirit of Jesus Christ as me. Put it in a family setting, your own brother, say a twin brother or sister or your mother, same DNA, same surname. Just imagine when you have really bitter feuds. It's just not right. It's all about oneness. And I'm not talking about uh, oneness in a group of believers in one church. I'm talking about the eternal dimension of the church of Jesus Christ. The eternal dimension of the church of Jesus Christ. Different tongues, different tribes, different um, expressions, different sizes. Oneness. Knowing very well, that's my brother. You know, up in the sticks where we live, um, in a part of uh, the UK, well, not in the sticks, but away from London, um, we were having a walk with my wife yesterday. And... Um, in, in just we love taking strolls in the evening as we um, marinate as to how the day has progressed and, and, and indeed what the highlights are and what the Lord is saying and doing. And as we're walking and there were traffic lights just next to traffic lights and as the cars were passing by us, uh, we, we heard a, um, music coming out of a car and it was worship music. We looked at each other and, and we go, did you hear that? We, we actually tried very hard to listen within the noise and it was actually the guy and it was very loud windows down and it's playing worship music we didn't expect it but we felt a connection if it wasn't for the traffic lights going green we wanted to go and say hello all of a sudden like we've got a brother here or a sister but then the traffic lights released the cars and they went and we're like wow did you see that we we, we, we got elated we were like those men that were walking with Jesus, St. Ruth Emmaus, something that leapt inside of us, it is the nature of a believer. It is, it's there. It's in that. As long as you are in Christ Jesus, that aspect is there. Connectedness to one the other. Jesus was very intentional when he said that he is the head, we are the body. That is an intentional statement. I have an issue when after all the challenges are discussed, a believer with another believer, a sister with another sister, a man of God with another man of God cannot come to a point of reconciliation. Is it the same spirit or is there another Jesus? That is the next question. Because if it is, surely goodness triumphs over evil. Surely at some point, you come to yourself and connect with your brother. Why? Because that connection is the testimony of Jesus to the rest of the world. That's the testimony. A testimony is not how long we worship. No. That the world will see. Oh, my God. How powerful. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter number three, verse six, um, I want to share something here. Another scripture. Uh, Ephesians chapter number three and verses number six. I'm a little bit on the traditional side. I like opening the pages of scripture and I like to smell them. Someone might be thinking, man of God, don't you have these fancy technology iPads and all that? I... I perhaps prefer this way. You can bear with me. But if you can open your application, your phone, your Bible, Ephesians chapter number three. Let's read verse number five. Um, the mystery revealed. Let's start from verse, uh, Ephesians three, verse one. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you, Gentiles, if needed, you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. How that by revelation, he made known to me the mystery. Listen to this. 
as I have briefly written already, verse 4, by which, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. When you talk about the Gentiles, they were the outsiders, the barbarians, the sinners. That there is a reconciliation where in Christ Jesus. So if you know someone, you have known their reputation of as being, you know, someone that society might judge as a criminal, as someone who is very bad, as someone who is very, whatever way you look at it, and they come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They make this confession they are born again. Perhaps you've seen them on television as part of headline news that they are on the wanted list. Maybe they are murderers, but they have encountered the person of Jesus Christ. This is the mystery and this is the miracle. Automatically they are your brother. Oh my God. Automatically they are your brother. And therein is meant to come a connection that only God does. So Paul is giving light to these Ephesians. He's saying to them, now you've got to understand that in Christ Jesus, this mystery was hidden from the ages, that the Gentiles are also fellow heirs. I can preach this gospel. I may not have the blood DNA of Abraham. And quite frankly, I don't need it. Because I've got a superior DNA in Christ. He's my brother. Indeed, I partake of that blessing in Galatians 3.13. And so do you. Now, when you understand that your heritage is my heritage, your inheritance is my inheritance, then why fight? Yes, the way you presented 1 Peter 4, 7, and the way I interpreted it before I got deep understanding might be completely different. But that's just a small matter. That's a small matter. And I tell you why it's a small matter. In the book of Acts, chapter number 19, we see the disciples of Apollos ministering unto the people. And when they finished ministering unto the people, there were some gaps in their doctrine and application. So Paul comes. To complete the work. And then he realizes that these people do not appear as though they, sh they are in a place they ought to be. And then he asks the questions, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they go, we've never heard of one called the Holy Spirit. And he says, really? So in whom did you believe then? In whom were you baptized? Paul ministered. He taught them and baptized them in the Holy Spirit. And they spake in other tongues. They were enriched in power and they went on their way. Paul recognized that what my brother Apollos is doing and what I'm doing is the same work. There might be a few gaps here, but that is so small compared to the brotherhood we have in Christ Jesus. Oh my God, once we get this maturity, the world will reshape itself. Will reshape itself in the image of Christ Jesus because darkness dissolves in light. Everything gravitates to light. It's not true light if we are not one. Glued glued together in the word in the word you look at the history of the church we've seen these factions that have come through all through the dark ages where christianity there was a threat of this obliteration we see um the journey of um when scripture was burnt and uh, they tried to um you know uh, adulterate scripture they tried to um uh, uh do all sorts of ugly things. And we see men that God has ordained who were martyred for preserving these truths for you and I. And Jesus prayed for this entire experience because 
he desired the fulfillment of the prayers that he made in John chapter number 17. I desire to close as I lay my case. You see in scripture again, Paul rebuking Peter. Peter was trying to be a hypocrite because as the Jews were coming, he would pretend like he's not been eating with the Gentiles. And he said, no, let's stop that. You could see Paul has got the theme in mind that we are all one. So what has brought about these divisions? I'll take you to the book of Matthew, chapter number 13, verse number 25. We read there. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 25. One of the things that has led to this division. Division means a eh, that something has crept in and eaten the body. Just imagine a piece of bread and then a little mouse comes and starts eating it in the middle, then it disintegrates and then it's two pieces of bread instead of one. That mouse has brought the division. Or just imagine anything, any food stuff that had been kept together, then a foreign impurity comes in and then creates that division, either division in terms of how it is layered together. You begin to see all the other elements divided because the, an intruder has come in. That's what brings the division. Now you'll understand why Jesus decides to abandon momentarily the 99 and pursues the one to make sure that there is this oneness. In the book of Matthew chapter number 13, we see the parable of the tares. Uh, and I'm going to read verses number 25. The parable of the tares. And this parable is symptomic of the harvest when the son of man will come and harvest out those that are for the kingdom and those that aren't but there's a principle we need to pick up here he says another parable he put forth unto them saying matthew 13 verse number 24 he says another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field my god good seed but when men slept someone say that again while men slept in other words had they been awake we would be reading a different continuation to this story but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way while men slept division the unity of the body has been compromised while men slept who are these men the man who plants the seed is representation of the steward of the garden the steward of the plantation the minister the man of god could be a father in a home it could be a leader in a community it could be a pastor or a deacon of a church while these men slept it could be the elders this is when the enemy plants tears and walks away so these seeds look like the good seed why because when they grow up they look the same but when the grain had sprouted and produced crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner of the house came and said, Sir, how did you sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The issue is sleeping. What does this sleeping mean? Sleeping means engaging a position of passiveness where we are meant to be active. While men slept, instead of being on guard, do you realize that when the shepherds were tending their flock, by night an angel appeared. He appeared to these shepherds as they were awake tending to their flock. So these men were, uh, were asleep. And this is the time to wake up. 
time to be alive and awake. The Bible declares in the book of 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober and vigilant because the roaring lion is roaming around waiting on whom to devour. We are meant to be participants. We cannot afford to sleep. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse 4, gives us an example of the men who have sowed these tares. 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. We're going to read there quickly. Every time we read scripture, something is happening. Something powerful is happening. So I'm doing this on purpose. Every time you read scripture, something powerful happens. Seven, second Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 4. He said, for if he who comes and preaches, for if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Now Paul is aware and is addressing it. Or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. He's upset. So what is this that you're believing? And you realize that in the times of the disciples, because the Bible declares there's nothing new under the sun, even in the time of the disciples, we had false people. We had false seed that came in the plantation. But is examples of men who are awake. They are not dependent on any man's glory to be quiet because they might lose out on a paycheck. They say it as it is. As you can see, Paul says that if there is any man in the book of uh, Galatians, if there is any man who preaches another gospel, even if it were an angel, let him be a cast, anathema. He said, no, 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 we're not tolerating this. I am picking out a few things. Why? They are compromising this unity, which is the testimony of Christ. And is being fought for. These are stewards who fought for the integrity of the gospel. You recall in the book of Acts when Peter says uh, to these uh, things, Acts chapter number six, you know, groups of people were uh, fighting over who should have what privilege in serving food and all that. He said, listen, choose among you men who are anointed, okay, and then who we'll Pray that the power of the Holy Spirit rests upon them. And then what? We will concentrate on prayer and the word, not words. So the do doctrine was one, which is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So Paul demonstrates to us that he is alive and he can sniff when the enemy comes to sow these tears, this ugly seed. The, the, the steward doesn't wake up to realize that the tears have grown. He's not asking the question further down the line. He's addressing it right on the head. We also see Peter, again in the book of Acts, we see Simon the sorcerer trying to sow tears. Peter has ministered. Where Philip was, he's come back after having heard that, you know what? The power of God is moving in Samaria. So let's just go and consolidate that work and make sure that people are where they should be. And as they ministered after, um, after Philip, then Simon comes and he says, oh, uh, um, you know, I can give you some money and I get that power. He said, you've got no part and lot in this. Right on, straight on. Why? Because he needs to safeguard the integrity of this oneness of this oneness of the body. Oh, shekiri man darama. Second point. Mark 13, 33 to 37. Mark 13, 33 to 37. It is very similar to the point I've just made uh, of being awake. So in Mark 13, is a very interesting portion of scripture. I like it from 33 to 37. Write down these scriptures. They are life. And it says here in Mark 13, take heed, watch and pray. It's not just pray. Most people think watch and pray. For you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and to command 
the doorkeeper to watch. Watch and pray. What does being watchful mean? Being alive in the spirit. How are you going to be watchful? You're watchful in the word. The Bible declares, test the spirits. That's being watchful. Because if you do not know the word, you do not know what to watch. You do not know whether what they're telling you is right or wrong. That is why you, found, you find some people so gullible paying money to ministers to pray for them. The gospel is not a transaction. It's freely given by the grace of God. That is absolutely unacceptable. That's not oneness. Your brother doesn't come to you and say, can I have some dinner? And you say, well, put down 50,000, you know, whatever currency. No, because even you, that dinner has been given unto you. So watchful means you've got to be alive and conscious and cognizant of the things of God. That's why he left you with the word. Watch means that your eyes are open to see. Watch means that your eyes gravitate towards the light of Christ. That's why the Bible declares that his word is the lamp upon our feet. If it is the lamp upon our feet, then your spirit man needs to respond to that light. That's how you watch. And then you pray. Watch and pray. This is how you safeguard this oneness. This is how you keep your spirit man supple enough to navigate the challenges that will attempt to compromise your oneness with your brother. Watch and pray. This is the season where we're watching and praying. Watching also means having a good eye, faith and deed. In the book of Matthew chapter number six, the Bible talks about having a good eye, looking to observe, is my brother okay? Is my sister okay? When you meditate and think and ask the Holy Spirit to marinate your spirit, man, what do you see? What is the nature of your responsiveness? This is what the world is looking for. Watching and praying. Not just praying because then you need to be relevant. You recall when they were building, rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. I think it was, uh, how am I going to forget this guy? Uh, not Hezekiah, Nehemiah. Thank you, Jehovah. Nehemiah. The point came when they were attacking them and they had ammunition and weapons. They had uh, bows and arrows and they divided themselves and they were building this wall and they were keeping watch. Christianity is not passive. It is the life of Christ. We live this ordinary life, but in a manner that displays who Christ is. With each other. We need each other. Because we are one body. I am preaching the gospel now, and I root for every man of God that preaching the gospel, wherever they are, whichever language. I have said to my spirit, I always pray for them. Why? Because that could be my toe, my finger, and if it hurts, I'll have a headache. I need them to be functioning in the full grace of the Holy Spirit, just like I need me to be fully functional. That's my mindset. I cannot be the one-eyed among the blind. That doesn't make me comfortable. It shouldn't make you comfortable. So there are some walls, there are some separations. There's this competition that is being broken down right now in the body of Christ, in the name of Jesus. It's not about competition. Have you ever seen your nose competing with your mouth? No. The functions are different, despite the fact that they sit comfortably in, on your face. There's no point for them to compete. Just like you've never seen your ears Competing for a handshake. They don't need to be there. They are comfortable where they are. They are useful, just like the hands are. It's the same principle. And that's why Jesus prayed for this. Because it is absolutely critical. And we're talking about discernment, testing the spirits and the false doctrines. This is how I end with this. Having understood all that, we are commanded to love one another. Love is the glue that ties this piece all together. 
This love is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit is the love of men. With the Holy Spirit is the agape love of God. The agape love of God is not, con is not a conscious kind of love. No, it is deeper than that. The agape love of God is what is drawn from the wells of his eternal nature. So you need to be born of God and you need to have the spirit of God alive in you. For the wells of this eternal nature from which the springs the agape love of God. It is this love that does not reason. It does not have a conscience to choose which way is, is better than the other. That is the love that Jesus Christ commanded them. This they will know, that you are my disciples. When you love one another, it's that oneness. As I close, I want to pray. First and foremost, I believe, as Jesus said in one of the scriptures he said heavenly father i know you always hear me i believe that god the father had the son in john 17 when he said that prayer everything that jesus prayed god heard it and answered it i believe that so i believe it is possible very possible to have a body of christ that functions the way God designed it to function. I believe that. It's, you take the small steps. We take the small steps. And I also want to pray for somebody. You've heard me speak this gospel. You've heard me preach. You want to know about this Jesus. You want to embrace this life. You want to get this zeal. You want to read this word and enjoy it and, and for it to take root inside of you. You want the life of God inside of you to, to illuminate when you read the word of God. You desire to be born again. Perhaps you resonate with some of the examples I gave earlier on, and you want to turn your life around. You've tried it on your own. Maybe you're that kind of person who has been competitive, who has been ruthless, trying to be ahead of everybody at the expense of anything. And you're thinking you're tired of that. You're tired of that. You want to live a life where you have fellowship with the brethren. You need Jesus in your life because all that I'm talking about is possible with Jesus. And I'll tell you what, in John 17, when he said, I pray for those that these people will always minister to. In John 17, chapter number 20, John, John chapter 17, verse, uh, verse 14, and verse number 20, you are that, that person that Jesus prayed for and today. Just lift your faith and accept the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you know, every time the gospel is preached here on earth as I'm doing, there is a greater dimension of glory happening in the spirit realm. Do you know that the angelic are preparing banquets and tables of, of nice food and celebration on your behalf? The Bible declares that there is a party in heaven when one soul returns to Jesus and has been knocking on your door. Folks, nobody knows. Nobody knows the hour of the day. Today is the opportunity you have. You've heard me preach this gospel. You've heard me and you're thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe not. Do not hesitate. If your heart, if your spirit man resonates with what I'm saying, I'm going to ask you, we pray together. One minute. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity as I'm hearing you right now. I thank you because today I have seen the light. I want you to come in my life. I want to walk with you. I want to be one with my brethren. I want to um, do away with competition. I want to do away with um, all these things that uh, are selfish. I want to lead a life where I'm rooted in you. I want to embrace you as my Lord and Savior. Teach me your ways that I may walk ye in them. And indeed that I may be an example to all the others that do not know you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that prayer with me, today, 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 right today, your life has changed forever. And God is going to vindicate your experience. You are born again. It is not an event of, of uh, you know, it is not something that, you know, is so, so huge. It is that simple because this is a spiritual life and God is going to teach you and show you his way and he's going to make you glad. Glory to God. Glory to God. I am persuaded that there are parties, tambourines in heaven. And I pray in the name of Jesus. I deploy the angelic over your life that they may go to work that indeed your life is patterned the way of Christ. May his spirit teach you, instruct you, lead you to the right leaders, the right people to teach you the way of Christ, that indeed his purposes may be fully manifest and rooted in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. We are one in Christ. That is how the world will know that we are his disciples indeed. God bless you mightily and richly. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, 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 wow. Awesome word, awesome word, man of God. May God richly bless you. <laughs> did you ever catch grasshoppers, uh, Martin, or, do you, or, you, or, or you're one of those people who, who never ate grasshoppers? Um, I've caught grasshoppers before. And, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, when I've when we were growing when we were growing up, we used I you know I usually tell this story. It's you know when we were growing up, we used to catch grasshoppers, you know, in the night because grasshoppers are caught in the night anyway. Then we would, yeah. we would, we would put some people, some uh, some others would use calabashes, but some some of us would, would use bottles. So when you put those grasshoppers in the bottle and you go home uh, because you are tired the whole night, you have been you know running after them. You just you, you put them aside and and, and take a nap, you know, uh, preparing to to, to roast them in the in in the morning mm -hmm. but the, whenever you would wake up you would notice something you know that in this in this uh, bottle there are these grasshoppers of course they are, they are different colors if you you know some of them are green others are yellow you know and yeah. you would notice that there was something going on in this bottle mm -hmm. they were you would see them eating eating one another mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. forgetting that they are all of them grasshoppers. They may grasshoppers. one may be green, another may be yellow, but they oh. are still grasshoppers. What an you know? analogy! Yeah, Brilliant. and and they, the the other is eating the, the green one is eating the, the yellow one, thinking this is is the yellow one that put it in the bottle. Yet oh. the person who put it in the bottle, just like the guy who saw the who saw the, uh, the tears, is That's asleep, right. wa is wait, asleep. Wait, waiting to wake up and roast them. Mm. So instead of working together. Because mm -hmm. they are in this together, they are eating one another instead. Ah, you know? And that's how it is with us, the body of Christ. We are in this together. We are, <laughs> instead of working together, how to navigate the vicissitudes of, of life, we are mm -hmm. busy eating one another. And that's what Paul was talking about. You know, he comes and finds, like, I think you, you gave reference to that, where, where, where some of them are saying, for me, I belong to Apollos. Another one says, I belong to, 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 to Paul. And he's saying, did anyone, any, any one of us die, die for you guys? You know? Exactly. Exactly. So uh, thank you so much for sharing, sharing that, that, that awesome word. And I think, uh, just to crown it all, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, Paul says, I therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk in worthy uh, of, the, of the calling with mm -hmm. which you were called. And he says, how? With all lowliness and gentleness and long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. You mentioned love, that less that, that, that binds us together. He says, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. May God help us and man of god may god bless you for sharing that awesome word and apologetically may the lord continually uh, anoint you may he bless you and your family your beautiful wife and your children and may he take ampelos word ministries to a higher level in the name of jesus Glory we love you so much and uh, you know like i normally say we will have more of you here and again and again and again and uh, yeah 
somebody on the ch on the chat just show some love to uh, to to pastor martin by 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 uploading him thank you so much thank you so much man of god <laughs> may the lord bless you may the lord go ahead of you may he give you every desire of your heart sir in the name Amen. of jesus and i know that you will be you'll be back to continue on those, on that series and i know that there's a lot <laughs> very soon very soon uh, when when we get off here we'll talk again and see when next you can come back on and share from the word but that was really deep that was really deep may the lord bless you sir and we are going to release you to go and uh, and have some dinner i know that you know you had a very long day amen Amen. Please convey our regards to Sheila and the young and the young and the young men, and uh, t uh, tell us that we are praying for them. And one of these days, you are gonna come down in London and minister in person on a Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let's applaud uh, Pastor Martin one more time. Hallelujah, and release him uh, to go and, uh, and 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 have fellowship with his family. God, God bless you, man of God. God bless you too, sir. Amen and amen. That was Pastor uh, Martin. I hope you uh, you were blessed by that word. And um, I know that we are not just going to be, you know, hearers of the word, but we are going to be doers. Hallelujah. Go be a doer. Go be a doer. And um, let us maintain that unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, just like uh, Paul, you know, admonishes us to do. Amen. And amen and amen. So as, be, as we are coming to, uh, to an end, as I normally do, I give an opportunity to anyone uh, out there that wants to, uh, to, to, to give. Uh, if you want to give, uh, there are three ways of giving. You can give uh, through uh, the website www.shallow.org forward slash give uh, or direct to the bank account. Uh, the bank details are there. And if you have that app called Gift, you can um, scan that code and your gift will be taken. Or you can use that PayPal QR code. Your offering will also be taken. I will pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, thank you, Father God, for your children. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your daughter that is pulling out an offering to appear before you this very evening. May you come down in, in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. And may you release the blessings that they will have no room where to place them in the name of Jesus. May it come down to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in Jesus' mighty name. Bless them for their generosity. And I thank you, King of Kings, for the increase that you are putting upon them and their families. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And somebody shouts, Amen, and Amen, amen. and Amen. Just to remind you of our programs, you know, uh, Monday to Friday, we have uh, Morning Glory from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Tune in, that's on Zoom. Tune in and pray. People are praying. Miracles are happening. Do not uh, be left behind. On Fridays, we have this service from 7.30 up to around now. Um, as the Spirit leads, don't miss. And I want to thank all of you who tuned in this evening in the name of Jesus. I know you have been richly blessed. And on Sunday, of course, we have um, um, our uh, usual service, which will run from 11 um, to around 1.00 as the Lord leads. When the Holy Spirit is uh, moving, at times we can go beyond that. But I want to thank you so much for being here, and uh, I hope you have been tremendously blessed. So we are going to say, uh, I'm going to pray for you, uh, then we'll say the words of the grace, and then we will call it a night. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your children. I thank you, King of Kings, O oh Father, for every man, woman, boy, and girl that tuned in this evening. Thank you for being with us. We pray that, King of Kings, you will come and abide in our presence, O oh Father, Lord, in our praises. And you did come in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, Lord, for you used your son, Father, Lord. You used your son, King of Kings, to come and speak your word, my Father. You used mercy, my Father, Lord, in song. And, King of Kings, we know, the Father, Lord, you are binding us with that love. And we are going to be men and women who pursue unity, who pursue oneness in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you the praise. Give us that unction. Give us that unction to pursue oneness in Jesus' mighty name. Father, bless your children. Bless them, Father God, as they tune off and as they go uh, to go about their normal duties in the name of Jesus. Father, may you come down in their lives in a special way. We speak healing to those who um, are, are aching, those who are in pain. We speak uh, comfort to those who have lost their loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. Surround them with your love. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let's share the words of the grace together, guys. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen and amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. We give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. May he cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for tuning in and hope to see you on Sunday. God bless you.